Good morning, Logan Hope family. So glad that you were able to tune in with us this morning. We are glad to have you with us here for this week's chapel service. Um, this week, I'm very excited. We have our third graders sharing for Clash Chapel today. They have been working uh, for a long time before we uh, even had to go home for the pandemic. Um, the third graders have been working on this uh, this presentation. So I'm excited uh, for you guys to get to, to see this and enjoy this today. I'm going to pass things over to them in just a minute, but I had a few announcements for you all. Uh, first of all, I want to announce that next Wednesday, that's going to be April 29th, next Wednesday we will not have classes for school. Uh, your teachers are going to be going to school themselves on that day. They're going to have a teacher training. Uh, so there are not going to be classes for students on that day. Uh, and so you can take that day uh, if you need to catch up on some work to catch up on that and, uh, and get back up to speed. Um, and uh, we would encourage you guys to, uh, to arrange some phone calls with each other, to get connected with each other, to take it as a day to be, uh, to be social and connect over all kinds of different platforms that, um, that, that you can, can think of. Um, we would encourage you guys to, to have some community with each other during that day. It was so great to have so many of you tune in for our Race for Education on Friday. Uh, if you weren't able to make it for any reason, uh, then you can you can go back, or if you want to rewatch parts of it, uh, and you can go back to the video on our YouTube page. Uh, we'd love for you to, to go there and, and check that out. It was really great to have you guys there. And we saw a lot of support come in on that day as well, and a few classes had reached some important milestones. And so I'd like to do a quick badge update for the Race for Education. We had two classes that have passed the $1,000 mark, and they have earned a new badge. So the classes that have earned these badges so far, we had second grade earning $1,100. That is the total that you guys are at. Way to go second grade. $1,100. We had another class get even more than that. They are at $1,380. Eighth grade. Way to go. Um, great job second grade. Great job eighth grade for getting there. We have not closed out the giving for this, and so you can still uh, encourage people to support your classes during this time. Uh, you can share your pages uh, over email or social media. I'd also just like to uh, to give a special shout out to two other classes. Um, one of them is fifth grade. Fifth grade, you are so close. You're at nine hundred seventy-five dollars. Twenty-five more dollars gets you to that to that thousand dollar mark. And I also wanted to give a shout out to our third graders. Uh, we got this past week from one of our third graders the cash envelope uh, where um, where there had been collections that had, that had been made. And I just wanted to say, way to go, great effort with that, to, uh, to reach out to people in this time and to continue raising support. I'm proud of you guys. And uh, so I wanted to give some special shout outs and we're looking forward to seeing what else comes in. I'm going to pass it off to third grade and give a, a word of prayer to do so. Would you guys pray with me? God, we give thanks for this message today. We ask God that you would speak to us through, uh, through your word and through the story that is shared. And uh, thank you, God, for the third graders that have worked hard on this. God, we lift up uh, those throughout our city and beyond uh, that are hurting right now. God, we lift up all within our Logan Hope family that are in tough times right now. I want to lift a uh, lift them up in prayer to you, God. I want to pray for everyone who is um, uh, who's feeling cramped up in their houses, uh, for everyone who is is missing friends, uh, for all the all the parents who um, who are are going through challenges as God, as well, God. I just lift them up to you right now, God. Would uh, this time just bring us together, and we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to send it over to Miss Scaffone and the third graders. Good afternoon, Logan Hope. I am so excited for you guys to see the video that Third Grade has put together for you guys today. I have a lot of mixed emotions because there is a part of me that's sad. Sad because I miss all of you. Sad that we can't be together today and gather and worship like we normally do for chapel. But I know that God has been so, so faithful because months before quarantine ever happened, God put the idea in the third grade class's heart to make a video for chapel. And what we didn't know then was that we wouldn't be able to be in person for chapel. We just thought a video would be a really fun idea. 
but God knew we wouldn't be able to be in person. So it was the perfect opportunity for an online chapel. What you're about to watch is a video that third grade has put together displaying the life of Joseph. Joseph is a story of a man in the Bible who had a lot of hard things happen to him. One of the hard things you'll see happened is that his brothers sold him into slavery because they were jealous of him. And despite all the bad things that kept happening to Joseph, Joseph continued to trust God and work really hard. That makes me want to just work hard in everything I do because I know that God has a plan. And something that's really cool about the story of Joseph is that all these bad things kept happening to him and God was just continually faithful in Joseph's life. And at the end of the story, you'll see how God used Joseph being sold into slavery to rise Joseph up to a really high position in Egypt. God knew that Joseph was going to one day be in Egypt and be saving the lives of many, many people. But in order for him to do that, he had, he had to be sold into slavery first. In Genesis 50, 20, Joseph was talking to his brothers and he says to them, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. And basically what Joseph is saying is you hated me and you sold me into slavery, but I forgive you because I can see now that God was faithful in that and he meant that for good. So I'm very, very excited to present the story of Joseph told by third grade. I suggest that you grab some popcorn, settle in, because this is going to be a really enjoyable watch. Once upon a time in the land of Canaan, there was a man named Joseph. Joseph's dad got him a sweet coat. His brothers were like so jealous. Joseph was Rachel's son. Joseph's father loved Rachel the most out of all his wives. Then Joseph had crazy dreams about his brothers bowing down to him and they were like, well, I'm not doing that. Bruh, Joseph's brothers were like so mad. They threw him in a well, sold him into slavery and said, Adios, amigos. Joseph continued to honor the Lord despite all the bad things that were happening to him. Speaking of bad, Joseph became a slave for a guy named Potiphar. At first, Joseph and Potiphar were bros. But eventually, Potiphar threw Joseph in prison because Potiphar's wife lied. Talk about a bad romance. But even the prison guard saw Joseph's faithfulness and put him in charge of the prison. The guards were like, you do everything while we be slobs. No matter what hard time came his way, Joseph continued to honor God. And then Joseph met two men in prison and God gave him the ability to interpret their dreams. One man was the cupbearer and the other was the baker. But when the baker told Joseph his dream, Joseph was like, how should I put this? Unfortunately, the baker was executed. But the cupbearer had good news. He was getting his job back. Cover said, I'm going to tell the fertile about you. But he had his fingers crossed behind his back. It wasn't until Pharaoh started having dreams about seven fat cows being swallowed by seven skinny cows that the cupbearer remembered Joseph. That's when it clicked with the cupbearer. He was like, gosh dang, I think I left him in there for two years. 
Joseph ended up interpreting the Pharaoh's dreams. The seven fat cows represented seven years of plenty, and the seven skinny cows represented seven years of famine. After Joseph explained these dreams, Pharaoh decided to put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. But guys, that wasn't the end of Joseph's story. Oh yeah, Joseph's brothers were starving in Canaan and they came to get food from Egypt. Oh that's right, their dad was like, why are y'all bums staring at each other when there's food in Egypt? Yes, Joseph's brothers came to Egypt for grain and bowed before Joseph. I knew that dream Joseph had in the beginning meant something. He pretended he couldn't talk to his brothers. He was like... And then Joseph pretended his brothers were spies to get them to bring their youngest brother, Benjamin, to Egypt. Joseph's father heard was like, No, why is this happening? Can everyone just chill? But Joseph's family ran out of grain and they ha had no choice but to go back to Egypt with Benjamin before they starved to death. When Joseph's brothers brought Benjamin back, Joseph knew their hearts had changed. He told them what they meant for evil, God meant for good. And then Joseph cried a lot. I mean a lot. Like a whole tsunami. In the end, Joseph was able to forgive his brothers and invited them to come live in the kingdom with him. Two, three. Adios, amigos. <laughs> no, keep going. Oh, you're, you look happy, you look sad. No. No. There's a man named Joseph. Look at the camera, You're shocked. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Sold him into slavery. Ow. And